uh, can also be described as tall elves. All right, and you have uh, descriptions of your space type things that go with Sumer, except that they're in the the megalithic stone structures that seem to interconnect worldwide at one time. Mm. So there's a lot going on, is all I'm saying. And apparently remnants have always survived. I mean, there's previous destructions of civilizations, and some went underwater, some went underground, some went into space. And I have wondered if some of our, uh, what if the greys are future events and they've been underground and they're remnants or remnants of a past civilization, right? And coming back here to try to regain some DNA that they lost because they breeded it out because they seem to have more of a hive mentality and, uh, are genderless as we know gender, right? So they probably replicate through cloning kind of thing to be responsible. And <laughs> well, you can okay. only, you can only, clo- you, you can only clone so many times, <laughs> you know that? Well, you can only clone so many times. It's like if you take a recording, right? And, and you, you know, uh, you, no, 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 no. I'm wrong no, because it's not not like making a Xerox if you are manipulating uh, just genetic design. It's more like a, a digital reproduction. Yeah, but a, a digital re, uh, reproduction after you each time you do it, it loses uh, it loses some quality. So I mean, maybe that's why I don't know if the digital does. Other audio and analogs, and that the idea that you lose some quality each replication came from making copies with a Xerox machine. Right. Okay. And today, we do not, or from making audio tape of an audio tape of an audio tape with an audio uh, device, right? But today we use better technology. We use digital. And when you make a copy, your copy is as good as the original. It's the same data, right, being preserved. Now, you could lose things through accident or error. uh, But it is possible to make a true copy that retains quality. Well, you can too, but even though, even if you get, one thing I, I I do know about is you know digital quite a bit. Uh, I know even with the highest quality uh, duplicating, eventually it will start breaking down. You get artifacts, so maybe like with again too with the grays or whatever up there, uh, you know, coming back. That's why they're they are you know abducting people, you know, and um, I don't know. You know, I don't know if you heard of Timothy Cullen. Uh, he was an implant removal by the late Dr. Roger Lear. He's been on my show a couple times. And I find it, you know, so intriguing. Why are they implanting people and monitoring people or whatever is going on? I find all this stuff so interesting. But Yeah, that would indicate, that would indicate a study which indicate a uh, new experience. Meaning that it isn't a group that has been here for thousands of years, right? This would indicate a group discovering us that wishes to study us. Yeah. I mean, you know, I even had uh, last, I think, Friday, a trucker who, you know, was not into UFOs and the paranormal to one night he was driving his truck you know, out in the middle of Texas, out in the desert, and all of a sudden he saw this cow being in a beam of light going up, well, up in the sky. And, you know, he didn't see any signs of a helicopter, didn't see any signs of, uh, you know, any cables, ropes, or chains. Uh, this makes you wonder, you know, if we are, you know, being abducted and studied and experimented on and yeah, all well, that have stuff. Have you ever... Okay. <laughs> Three questions. Have you ever seen a UFO? And I'm going to assume that if I say 
have you seen one on film or in pictures? You can say yes to that. But I'm going to ask, have you ever seen a UFO in person? You want me to answer? And I'm going to ask, have you ever met an ET or an IT or an ID, right, from wherever it's from? Well, I can... Have you ever interacted with another life form other than a human being? Other than my wife, no. But I will say this, back in the 70s, I was coming uh, back from North Carolina. I was in New Mexico on the on the freeway, which at that time, I think they had a like ridiculously high speed limit, like 100 or 105 miles an hour. And I was cruising in my GTO, you know, like well over 100. And all of a sudden, right then and there, out in the middle of the desert, all of a sudden, it, it looked like daylight. Uh, right around my car, and it was so bright it hurt my eyes inside the car. And my my wife at that time, thank God, I wish they would have abducted her if there was a, a a UFO. That didn't happen. But you know, I pulled off, and I thought, well, gee, it's it, it's a helicopter, you know, uh, a state police. Maybe I'm going to get pulled over for something, you know. And I get out of the car, and it's this bright light, and like within a matter of seconds, it was instantly gone. No sounds, no nothing. Mm -hmm. That's the only encounter I've ever had of anything. I can't identify what it was. Okay. I I have had my own encounters. And so I, I understand the validity of other people's. One of the things I want to talk is... Why is it hidden? <laughs> I mean, it's usually not a good thing that needs to be hidden, right? I don't think so, no. And maybe there's fear involved. I mean, have you ever seen the movie They Live? No, I never have. It's got a reality. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm still listening to you there. Yeah. Okay. okay, the movie They Live has got a reality that there's a vibration that makes ETs around us invisible to our perception. And then the humans in this movie are able to get first eyeglasses and then contact lenses and it allows them to see the aliens that are everywhere. Okay? That would be and scary. And the humans then go on a killing spree. And they want to immediately shoot and kill any ET they see. And I think that the backhanded message of this movie was that any ETs that are here need to hide. Because if a human knows that it's an ET, we're going to kill it. <laughs> oh, I, I think people would freak out. You know, but, you know, and a lot of people, you know, laugh at me when I say this. But you remember Orson Well, you know, when he did his uh, broadcast in the 30s, you know, War of the Planets. For mm -hmm. all those poor people, it tuned in on CBS radio about two or three minutes after he did his introduction, telling everybody this is nothing but a radio play. But, you know, people like... Yeah. You know, tuned in late, just like you do on TV. You flip channels, you flipped on there. All of a sudden, you're hearing that Earth is being invaded, right? Well, some people in the country mm -hmm. actually responded by getting guns, running around looking for aliens. Uh, there's a, a documented case where a guy killed his wife and family because he thought it would be better yeah. for him than, you know, waiting for the aliens to do it. I mean, you know, yeah. it, it, was, it was panic. And you know what gets me is... He How did that fly in court, by the way? <laughs> well, you know what got me is he didn't end up in well, jail. Here's over a it. conspiracy theory for you, real quick. What if the War of the Worlds wasn't a hoax and the aliens won and just hid their victory from us? Well, we wouldn't know. I mean, the government is so good at hiding everything, you wouldn't know, would you? No. No, it's like then when you want to challenge. Uh, History, you know, what if we lost World War II? <laughs> well, you know what? I watched, nobody told us. 
Yeah, I, I can't remember the name of a movie, but I watched one movie where all the politicians and everybody in power were aliens, you know, taking over. Yeah, all, all around the whole world, all the leaders, you know? Well, maybe not when they're elected, but maybe after, sometime after they arrive in Washington. Yeah. Because they sure seem, they sure seem to change once they get there. I once joked, you know, every president is portrayed by the opposition as the Antichrist, right? And this is the one that's going to be a Hitler, and this is the one that's going to destroy everything, and blah, 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 blah. So I figured, well, maybe it's not the person, maybe it's the house. And the house is possessed, and it just takes over whoever goes and lives in it, right? Right. Anyway. Yeah, possibility. But then what? Melania had the house cleansed when they first moved in this time, so she wasn't taking any chances. <laughs> well, you know, back in the 70s, I got a fine from the Federal Communication Commission. If there's anybody working yet with the FCC, if Trump hasn't laid him off or got him to resign, uh, I can say I, I did a little skit one time on radio, you know, terrestrial radio. I, I, I did a little thing, you know, to take off War of the Worlds. I said, hey, we've just been invaded by aliens from another planet but don't worry folks they only eat brains of the politicians and that means within a week <laughs> they are going to die off because they're going to starve to death because as you know the politicians have no brains and they only eat the brains of the politicians and i went a little bit more in in depth with sound effects and all that and all yeah. of a sudden like a couple weeks later i get this fine from the federal communication commission for saying all that stuff Hey, I didn't. I a paid fine? it. I got like a, uh, yeah. like, like a amount of money you had to pay. Yeah, the, I had to pay it, and the station had to pay one. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I might have used <laughs> so, a couple words in there I shouldn't have worded. I'm not. I'm not surprised. I mean, three cheers for everyone who lives free. Oh yeah. Okay. Because if you live in fear, you're doing their job for them. So. And, and if you're getting some attention upon you, then you might be doing something right. And at least you're keeping their attention off of others, right? Well, uh, something, yeah. Now, you we you got like about 15 minutes or so. What do you want to talk about? Uh, you know, do you want to talk about what you do and, you know, and all that stuff? Or? Uh I'm just open to talking about most anything that is interesting or relevant to the host who is being so gracious and kind and wonderful and nice to give me an opportunity to be a guest. I have 18 radio interviews now resident on my on my Facebook page for my books, which is say the Life of Christos series, and I try to make each one have something unique or different. And there really isn't that much that I haven't said before. So and just I leave it to you to customize it. Uh, I mean, I could tell you I am an author and that my best book is called The Thought of Us. And it is what I call a grimoire because it is based on research and experience and it's like a big toolbox to help people learn to cope with internal and external negativity in positive ways because when I go online uh, I am beset with people crying and complaining and it seems to be 90% of what they do they just don't have it together and I'd like to think that my textbook could help them to learn to help themselves. But I think that they don't want to help themselves, and they don't want to learn, and I'm somewhat discouraged. But for those who do, my book is uh, available on Amazon. And if anyone wants to learn more about me, you can find me by searching for Walt, which is J-U-A-L-T. And most of the results you get will be related to me, because when I came up with a name, it was the only time I had ever seen that word. 
but it has popped up now a few times in different places since then. So there's a smoke screen of a sort, I suppose. 